5.5 happens to be the last official lesson in the calculus section of the textbook and it is concerning the derivative of tangent and cotangent functions. So at this point you already know what the derivative of sine and cosine are so there's no reason why you can't derive the equation for the tan of theta because you know that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. So all we have to do is the quotient rule here and apply what we know about the derivatives of sine and cosine. So let's let y equal sine theta over cos theta, which of course is tan theta. And now we're going to take the derivative. So y prime, and we're going to do the quotient rule. So ho d high, the derivative of sine is cos theta. So we have cos theta, cos theta, and then minus high, which is sine theta. d ho, the derivative of cos theta is negative sine theta all over cos theta squared. Okay, so what do we have in the top here now? If you take a look, we have cos times cos, which is cos squared theta minus sine theta minus sine theta. So cos theta, that's plus sine squared theta. all over cos, and we can write this now as cos squared theta because we know the difference. We know that these are actually the same thing. And we do also know that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one from your trig identities lessons way back when. So I have one over cos squared theta and one over cos squared theta happens to be secant squared theta. So there's your first derivative. You found the tan of theta and you could have done that all. I'm sorry, the derivative of tan theta is secant squared theta. There we go. Okay, so now let's take a look at cotan squared theta. So we know what cotan is cotan theta is just the other way around, right? We have, am I on the page here? Nope. Okay, there we go. So we have cos theta over sine theta. So we're going to let y be equal to that. I won't write that line down this time. So we have, we're going to take the derivative of y prime. Having trouble with my pencil. There we go. So ho, sine theta. Derivative of cos theta, cos, anything starts with a C, goes to the negative, so negative sine theta, ho d high minus high cos theta, derivative of sine theta is cos theta, all over sine squared theta. So this is sine theta times minus sine theta. So that's negative sine squared theta minus cos squared theta all over sine squared theta. Now, if you look at the top and we factor out a negative sign, we'll get back to our nice one, right? Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. And that gives us minus 1 over sine squared theta. And what's sine squared theta? Cosecant squared theta. All right, so we get negative cosecant squared theta. And look, what did I tell you? If it starts with a C, it has a negative derivative. So cotan, negative cosecant. Tan, secant squared. And that will be our second little, a little rule that you should know. The derivative of cotan theta is going to be negative cosecant squared theta. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so let's take a look at um, some examples of some of the things that you should know how to do. 
and oops, lost my page that I wanted to find a question for you from. Okay, this one. Here we go. So we have y is equal to sine x plus tan x all to the fourth power. Okay, so you've got to use your little chain rule going down here. So y prime is going to be 4, leave everything in the brackets alone. Now take the derivative of the inside, reduce it by 1. Derivative of sine is cos x, and the derivative of tan is going to be secant squared x. Oh, that was just way too easy. Let's try one just a little bit harder. How about y is equal to cos x times cotangent x? So now we have to use the product rule. So y prime, don't forget to write y prime when you do these, right? So I have the first times the derivative. The derivative of cotan x starts with a c. It's going to be negative cosecant squared x plus cotan x times the derivative of cos x starts with a c. No, it's negative sine x. So that gives me negative cos x cosecant squared x. And this is going to become a minus. And cotangent x, that's cos x over sine x. So I'm just replacing this by its identity and multiplying it by sine x because I know I can, I can uh, clean that up a little bit like this. And so I have minus cos x, and I have a minus cos x here. So I can pull out a minus cos x, and I'm left with cosecant squared x plus 1. And there's a very nice uh, simplification. I had one more question I thought I would do from the homework that asks you to find, determine the local maximum. This is number 6. And they give you this equation, y equals 2x minus tan x. It says determine the local mix maximum, and they give you a domain restriction here. So x is going to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And of course, you know, for a trig function, it's necessary to be given a domain because these functions are, um, they continue, right? There's no, no end they just keep going and going, just like the ever read a bunny. Okay, so let's take the derivative of this. So we'll say y prime equals 2. And the derivative of negative tan x is going to be negative because this is a positive derivative. Secant squared, oops, secant squared x. So for critical values, we set y prime equal to 0. And that means I would have secant squared x is equal to 2. And that would mean that secant x plus or minus the square root of 2. Okay, so you should know what this is. Um, if you get stuck, maybe you might want to write it in terms of cos x. Because watch, if I write it this way, I'm sure you'll know what the answer is. Cos x would be plus or minus 1 over root 2. And 1 over root 2, that's your lovely little 45. So you have 1, 1 square root 2. So x here would be pi over 4. <clears throat> so x is equal to plus or minus pi over 4. Okay, so I want to know which one of these values gives me a local max. So I want local max here. You can look it in your textbook. Okay, so the way I'm going to figure that out is to figure out what is the height of the function at pi over 4 and minus pi over 4. So at pi over 4, y would be equal to 2 times pi over 4, which is pi over 2, minus the tan of pi over 4. And the tan of pi over 4 is 1, right? So if I'm here, this is pi over 4. 
opposite over adjacent. So this is equal to 1. 10 pi over 4 equals 1. So I have pi over 2 minus 1. And that is going to give me about 0 0.57. So now let's check at negative pi over 4. And I would have y equals 2 times negative pi over 4 minus the tan of minus pi over 4. And the tan of minus pi over 4, let's see here. Last time I did that, I wasn't thinking so much about it being the tan of negative pi over 4. So the tan of negative pi over 4, I'm in this quadrant, right? Minus pi over 4. This is C A S T. So the tan of negative pi over 4 is going to be the negative tan of pi over 4, which means this becomes plus 1. All right? Did you follow all that? Because I'm here, tan is negative. So the tan of negative pi over 4 equals the negative tan of pi over 4, which is negative 1. So I have minus minus 1 is plus 1, and this gives me minus pi over 2 plus 1, and that comes out to negative 0 0.57. So that means that the maximum is going to be at pi over 4. And I have nowhere to write that. I can write it here. Therefore, maximum at pi over 4 and 0 0.57 on this interval. Okay, so that's the end of calculus. So if this is the first section of the book that you're doing, you'll now be moving on to vectors. The vectors lessons will probably all be up before you get to one that's missing in your life. And I wish you all the best on your exam. If you're writing your final exam now, or maybe um, your teacher is giving you a final calculus unit exam so you can forget that and move on to vectors. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed the lessons and all the best in your studies for the rest of the semester and at university.